Hey guys, Death Letter Magic here, and yeehaw, it's time to get Western, y'all. Are you ready for Tiny Bones to join a California punk band? Well, too bad, this is like 1830s at, at the latest, and that would have been easily 1990, but um... You know where we at, it's Thunder Junction, let's start with Bovine Intervention, and by the way, they spoiled just about the whole damn set, so, um, I'm gonna be going through these 84 cards pretty dang quick, but I'm from Wisconsin, we stop for cows, alright? So, uh, my, my goal in this set, by the way, is to build, um, I believe it would be Oxen Tribal, but we'll just call it what it is, Cow Tribal. Now that's clearly a yak, but... All right, fine. Uh, but for two, instant white, destroy target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a 2-2 white ox creature token. I mean, that's so overpowered while also being almost exclusively for sealed formats that I can see why they put it in the uncommon slot. So next up, we got Lazav, Familiar Stranger. That's right, the shape-shifting leader of House Demir is here for some reason. I haven't read a single one of these yet, but just copying them over into my folder, you're going to get a lot of why is this person here. And I think the answer is because story. This is the crossover episode nobody wanted, but whatever. Might as well get silly once in a while to do this like epic, ridiculous thing with everybody. Too bad it's all villains, so I kind of don't care. <laughs> whatever. All right, so it's a three cost, uh, obviously demure colored, blue, black, one, four, legendary creature shapeshifter, when you commit a crime, which is basically messing with your opponent's stuff, or as they call it, targeting opponents, anything they control and or cards in their graveyard is a crime. So whenever you commit a crime, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Lazav Familiar Stranger, then you may exile a card from a graveyard. If a creature was exiled this way, you may have Lazav become a copy of that card until end of turn. Ooh, any graveyard. That is powerful. So it triggers only once each turn, but it would really only need to. Except under rare circumstances, but you know, plan it out. Okay, for two different reasons, how is this an uncommon? First of all, it's Lazav. He should be mythic. Rare minimum, but mythic. Come on, he's a guild leader. He is stupid powerful. And then two, this card is stupid powerful. It takes a lot of setup, but come on. Like, this is insane. They're doing my boy Lazav dirty, making him an uncommon. Next up, form a posse. It's uh, one white, one red, plus X create X, one one red mercenary creature tokens with tap target creature you control gets plus one, plus O till end of turn. Activate this only as a sorcery. And they are all over this set. Next up, we've got Jolene Plundering Pugilist, because when I think upper body strength, I think women. Oh, wait, no, I forgot. I have a functioning brain and know how biology works. Man, this is a fantasy set. Okay, first of all, it says human right on the card. And secondly, these dumbass weirdo lefties in Seattle live in a fantasy in reality. Anyway, 4-2 for three Christmas colors whenever you attack with one or more creature with power 4 or greater, create a treasure token. Damn. And then uh, if you pay 1 plus 1 red, uh, so 1 generic 1 red, uh, sacrifice a treasure, Jolene Plundering Pugilist, deals 1 damage to any target. Decent card, nothing special, but it's a legendary. It's in the uh, uncommon slot. We had leaked by Mark Rosewater a while ago that Legendary Matters is going to be back after it failed in Dominaria twice and Kamigawa at least twice. So next up, we've got at rare for some reason... Satoru, the infiltrator, because the, why not? Why wouldn't he be there too? Sure. Legendary creature, human, ninja, rogue, two, three, menace. Uh, whatever is Satoru, I uh, hope I'm saying that right, the infiltrator and or one or more other non-token creatures enters the battlefield under your control. If none of them were cast or no mana was spent to cast them, draw cards. In other words, if you're running degenerate crap. And this is a 2-3 for just one blue, one black. So, I mean, 2 cost 2-3 with that ability. It's not great, but it's not bad. Got to point out the uh, seemingly grammatical error in the flavor text. This backwater doesn't have a single wall, ward, or guard that could keep me out. Backwater in Western terms is an adjective. They forgot to put in the noun. Like backwater town, backwater fort, backwater something, building, whatever. You can't just use it as a noun. I mean, maybe it's in the dictionary, but that's just not in the common parlance. Next up, we got Double Down. Ooh, a mythic. Spicy. Oh, and Carmen San Diego's in this set. Because why not? <laughs> okay, so it's it's four cost blue and jam and non-legendary. I'll just point that out because I haven't read this yet and it's still probably terrible. Whenever you cast an outlaw spell, copy that spell. Oh yeah, the retroactive thing. Okay, so it's not really retroactive. It's actually a way smarter way to do it, but I broke it down as to why last time so assassins mercenaries pirates rogues and warlocks are all outlaws copies of permanent spells become tokens 
Next up, we got Rakish Crew. It's a three cost black enchantment uncommon, and when it enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 mercenary. You know what it does. And then whenever an outlaw you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So just, you know, solid little backup card. And then we've got Trained Arynx. It's a two cost white creature cat beast mount. The mount is like vehicles, but good, and it's kind of like bestow, but better. So I'm pretty amped about that. And whenever it attacks Wall Saddled, which is basically just crude, it has sa uh, Saddle 2, there's no difference. Um, it gains First Strike until end of turn, Scry 1. Next up, we've got Transmutation Font. I don't know what the hell that symbol is. It's not the Special Guest. It's not the Prison Bars. I legitimately don't even know if this is really technically in the set. Probably a Commander card. I don't know. Well, 5 cost, Artifact. Uh, create a your choice of a Blood Token, a Clue Token, or a Food Token. I wouldn't shop at a place that sells all three. Uh, if you pay three and tap it, sacrifice three artifact tokens with different names. I wonder where you'd get those. Search your library for an artifact card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Ooh, that's insane. Activate only as a sorcery. If you could cheat this into play in an artifact heavy like affinity deck, oh my god, you could just cause havoc early. Okay, I just checked because I wanted to know. Um, the prison bars are like, they, they help you commit crimes, but they're still uh, legal for like the set that they're in, so standard constructed. And then the picture of the vault, like right here, um, it was supposed to have an epilogue booster, but, and as I quote, due to negative feedback on March of the Machine, the aftermath, <laughs> really, the planned cards from the big score, which is what these are called, were incorporated as an extra bonus sheet, oh boy, in the regular play boosters. And these are also standard legal, apparently. Huh, didn't see that coming. The only ones that are not legal are the special guests, and we'll see those, because I think it's the Pentagon symbol. Even the wiki doesn't even have that. Even they're confused. Well, anyway, Mr. Old Tech Matter Weaver here is next. He's a three-cost white creature, human artificer, one of the 50 mythics in the set. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, choose one, create a 1-1 one -one colorless gnome artifact creature token. We're doing that again, apparently. Or uh, create a token that's a copy of target artifact token you control. Okay, specifically a token, but that's good. Especially as a 2-4, he's sticking around for a while against red. That's pretty cool. Next up, Vault Born Tyrant. I feel like the power level is going to be off the charts with this crap, but it was... Allegedly, these were made for standard. They just really wanted to sell the Aftermath set or whatever, whatever they call it. I don't know. Well, they're not doing it anymore, so they ain't calling it nothing. hey -o. But uh, 7 cost... Uh, Mythic Dinosaur, 6-6 six, six, Trample, and when Vault Born Tyrant, or another creature with power 4 or greater, enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 3 life and draw a card. Kind of spicy. When he dies, if it's not a token, create a token that's a copy of it. Oh, I hate that so much. Except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This didn't say Story Spotlight or anything, because the entire, like, supplemental set that they were planning would have been very story heavy. So this is, I guess, as they're opening or after they're opening the vault, it looks like the vault is creating dinosaurs out of nowhere. And then when they die, they come back as robots or constructs. So I don't know if they revealed it yet in the story because I sure as hell didn't read it, but um, the heck is this vault? This is the first uh, story in the quote metronome storyline, which was the, the nickname for the new thing, you know, like the bolus arc or whatever. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm almost interested enough to uh, read it, but not quite. So next up, we got Torpor Orb. It's a two-cost artifact. Uh, creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Ah, uh, yes, the Anti-Panharmonicon. I love it. Anything that shuts down something stupid, like just getting out of control with graveyard casting. Just You can't cast anything from the graveyard. Nothing from the graveyard can enter play at the end. That is my kind of card, so I love this. And if the name sounds familiar, uh, this is a reprint from New Phyrexia. That is a $10 Mythic, by the way. Maybe that's what was inside of the vault. I bet they're going to unleash a robot army, very similar to the Phyrexians. Just saying. Next up, we got Prismatic Vista. Ooh, special guest card. Of course, a reprint. Pay one life, sack it, search your library, you know, fetch land. They're going to have 90 different trims of this stupid thing. So, I, I don't remember if they confirmed 5 or 10, or if they even confirmed it yet, uh, Fetch Lands in Air. I think it's only 5, I'm pretty sure I heard that. But, well, we also have Escape Shift, and that is a spicy looking Escape Shift. I love everything about that artwork, this looks so sick. It's already a very expensive card, and this one is going to be expensiver. 
But yeah, this is a special guest card, so it's only legal if you pull it in limited, so don't worry, these can still ruin your draft or your sealed event, but they won't be in standard constructed, which you probably don't play. So this is Sack Any Number of Lands is a four-cost green sorcery, in case you haven't heard of it. Uh, search your library for up to that many land cards, put them onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. It's usually used in conjunction with a couple other famous cards that let you take stuff out of the graveyard and play, like, play a land directly out of it. Kind of neat. Next up, another reprint, uh, Notion Thief. Well, all the special guests are reprints, so I'll just stop saying that. This is a pretty cool card. So it's uh, four cost, one blue, one black, two generic, three one, creature human roll with flash. And if an opponent would draw a card except for the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, instead the player skips that draw and you draw a card. Oh, yes. Shutting down other people's degenerate crap like infinite draw go garbage. I'm into that. Next up, Desertion. I'm not sure I've ever heard of this card myself, so um, it is a five-cost counter spell. Instant. Ooh, counter target spell. If an artifact or creature spell is countered this way, put that card onto the battlefield under your control instead of the owner's control. I just found my new favorite card. This is Redirect if Redirect came with a free kick in the nuts. It's only like a $3 card, too. Uh, next up, Morbid Opportunist. This is a two-cost black one, three creature human rogue. And uh, whenever one or more creatures die, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. There are better versions of this out there. Then we got the famous, always printed to Modern Masters sets, Mystic Snack. Remember, no step on snack. So it's two blue, one green for some reason, plus one generic, two, two. Creature snake with flash. And when it enters battlefield, counter target spell. It's just counter something with an extra little F you added, and I kind of like that. Next up, we've got Desert, which I guess is a reprint. Um, it's a land subtype desert. I think land types are not technically considered subtypes. They're considered domains, but okay. But they're, they're printing more deserts in the set that weren't printed before, and this is the one that was, or something to that effect. Well, I mean, I'm on Cat had Desert Land, so this ain't that new, but um, okay, so you can bring it into play. Taps for colorless, or if you tap it, it deals one damage to target attacking creature. Activate only during the end of combat step. Eh, yeah, light minefield is more fun. Next up, Port Razor. Five cost double red orc pirate. Uh, it's also a special guest, of course. 4-4. Four, four. When it deals combat damage to a player, untap each creature you control after this phase. Oh, I hate this. There's an additional combat phase. Port Razor can't attack a player that has already attacked this turn. So in other words, it's for a multiplayer commander. Next up, Brazen Borrower. It's a three cost three one fairy rogue. It has the adventure instant speed of petty theft, which is only two mana. Return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. And then you can cast, I believe this from Exile, not the graveyard. I don't quite remember. Or you can just do it outright the first time. So uh, flash flying and then it can block only creatures with flying, but still a really good card. Then we've got Stormforge Mystic, a card that should not have been unbanned. Uh, it's a 1-2 two for 2 in white. When Stoneforge Mystic enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an equipment card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. And then if you pay 2 and tap it, you may put an equipment card from your hand onto the battlefield. Yep, free casting equipment right after you fetch it. I wonder why they would have banned this. Hmm. Next up, Path to Exile. That's right, standard legal Path to Exile. It's uh, Exile Target Creature for 1. Uh, it's controller may search the library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. I have been against this card since I first read it. Uh, people who say it's really good are either wrong or legacy players and, and thusly automatically wrong. If one in three cards in your deck is a land and somebody gives you an extra land, they just sent you three turns into the future. So they better be hoping that you don't get too many more turns by them removing what they just did. Or they're an idiot who is accelerating your deck way too fast and they're, you're, you're going to run them over. Path to Exile is immensely stupid, has absolutely no place in standard constructed whatsoever. And I absolutely hate it unless you're trying to kill somebody's stupid little glass cannon combo, in which case it is hilarious. So use it responsibly. Next up, Grindstone. Oh, great. Oh, one drop. Pay three, tap it, target player mills two cards. Yeah, it's Millstone, but more powerful. And hey, if two cards that share a color were milled this way, repeat the process. Look up the 69 different rules on that one. Next up, Dust Bowl. It's a rare land. Uh, you bring, uh, bring it in untapped, tap it for colorless, but then if you pay three, sack it, uh, destroy target non-basic land. And they do not get to replace it. 
But it's non-basic, so let's be honest, they had it coming. Uh, next up, we got Oko, Thief of Crowns, who looks like an orc and nothing like himself. Okay, so that's literally just Oko, Thief of Crowns. Um, I double-checked. The, the way this is phrased is the stupidest thing ever, so I just found a different source. Thanks, wiki authors, you guys suck. Um, this is not legal, unless it was already legal. So, no, they're not throwing Oko back into standard. Which is good, because this is the asshole with four loyalty, three costs in ramp colors, with plus two creative food token, which will just keep you alive forever, while also keeping him alive forever, so that's a bad combo, plus one removal or boost of your creatures, turning anything you want into an elk. Everybody agrees that should have been minus one or minus two, and the negative five, who cares, nobody does it, but uh, the most overpowered stupid mistake, he's banned in just about everything and everybody hates him, so um, yeah, bring him back, that makes sense, what a great idea, screw you wizards. Next up, Mana Drain, which is also not now in standard, unless it already was. I was going to read it, but you guys know what Mana Drain does, for God's sake. It's usually like a $30, $40 card. Oh, you got Clear Shot. Okay, cool. I mean, who cares? It's probably not in the set. Let's move on. The Key to the Vault. Hey. Oh, is this a Story Spotlight card? <laughs> no. For some reason. I guess it's not an event it's describing, but that looks important. It's standing right in front of the vault. Anyway, legendary artifact equipment, two drop. Uh, it's blue. Well, at least they made it legendary. Uh, whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, look at that many cards from the top of their library. Oh, I like this. You may excel a non-land card from among them. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I mean, an on-hit ability that's blind and doesn't use your own cards, that's better than on-hit draw a card, okay? I'm, I'm just, or not better, better as in more fair, as in it's worse. It's unpredictable, wacky, fun, but you might demolish them with it, and it makes their removal uh, decisions a little more complicated. And it's equipped three, so I mean, pretty reasonable. I like this, this is interesting. Next up, Ruthless Lawbringer. It's a three-cost black-white 3-2 three, creature vampire assassin, and when it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target non-land permanent. Oh, ho, ho. and you get a 3-2 out of it. Like, all right. Next up, Frontier Seeker. It's a two-cost white 2-1 two, creature human scout, and when it enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a mount creature card or a planes card. Ooh from among them and put it in your hand. This is just like an uncommon slot. I'm playing white sealed enabler, but I could see this slipping into standard constructed in the right circumstances or even commander. I mean, this is like really good. Uh, put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Okay, great. That's not bad for two. Next up, Honest Rutstein. That's right. Rutstein's in the set. And this was among the earliest artwork that we saw was him in this little carriage. And now you know it's him. Cool. So, uh... Three, cost one black, one green, three, two, legendary creature, human, warlock, and when he enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and then creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Ooh, spicy. Then we've got a double red scorching shot. Sorcery it deals five damage to target creature. Not flying only, not on the ground only, just straight up five. I guess they felt like making a double red and a sorcery made up for that, and they are incorrect. That's a little, little too powerful. I mean, it doesn't hit the player, but it's, this is a little much for two. Next up, holy cow, let's go. I'm still convinced that's a yak, but sure. Oh, or an oxen. The hell's the difference between an ox and a... I feel like I should know that. Anyway, three cost white creature ox angel. This, I believe, was either already hinted at or leaked. I don't remember at this point. Whole damn set basically leaked, but uh, two two flash flying, and when holy cow enters the battlefield, you may or you you gain two life and scry one. Going in my ox tribal, absolutely. We're like two cards in already. Let's go. Next up, it's armored armadillo. <laughs> they they had to. They just it's the dad jokes. It they're all like sixty. Now this is a one cost zero four. Never underestimate that. Also, it has ward one, which is twice as funny. <laughs> I am one hundred percent drafting. Definitely white plus, maybe mono white if I can get away with it. <laughs> when this deck comes out, dude, I'm telling you, my goal is to have fifty thousand coins. I'm not going to because I never play arena, but that's my goal. I, I never said you know I'm gonna get there, but uh, you can also pay for an armored armadillo gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is its toughness. This thing, while not being like, whoa, way too powerful for one, you have to invest four per swing to make it a vanilla. Well, combat vanilla 4-4, four, four, but anyway. This thing is a beast in limited. It's in the common slot. This is nuts. 
So hey, next up, Rattleback Apothecary. It's a three-cost black 3-2 three, creature Gorgon Warlock with Death Touch, and whenever you commit a crime, target creature you control gains your choice of menace or lifelink until end of turn. That is extremely good in black. I might put one or two of these in my mono black deck. This is actually, like, really good. Next up, Quilled Charger, because porcupines do be angry. Why you would ever try to ride that with that saddle, that is insane. But anyway, uh, four cost, four, three, porcupine mount. And when Quilled Charger attacks while saddled, it gets plus one, plus two, and gains menace until end of turn, and saddle two. I thought it would deal damage to the creature that, you know, quote unquote crewed it, you know, whatever, saddled it, same thing. Because, like, that would make way more sense, but I guess not. Next up, we got Vile Smasher, Gleeful Grenadier. It's a 3-2 legendary creature. Goblin Mercenary. Whatever, uh, another outlaw enters the battlefield under your control. Vile Smasher, Gleeful Grenadier. Deals one damage to target opponent. Yeah, that could get annoying. I could see it. Next up, Keck Tarantula. Something I definitely did not need to see today or ever. So it's a 6 cost 6 5 creature plant spider. Gee, I wonder if it has reach. Oh, look, it has reach. This spell uh, costs 1 less to cast if you control the desert. Oh boy. And whenever Keck Tarantula becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. Thanks, I hate it. Next up, Colossal Rattleworm. Uh, we've already seen this in the leak, so I'm going to skip it. Uh, then we got Make Your Own Luck. It's a five cost, one blue, one green sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may exile a non-land card from among them. If you do, it becomes plotted, which is kind of like Suspend, but not really. It's the Yu-Gi-Oh! version of Suspend. Put the rest in your hand. So um, that's not bad. You get three cards, basically. Now, plotting is you may cast it as a sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost. So in other words... Free casting minus one, so everything gains suspend one, which is a little overpowered, but uh, so is standard right now. Next up, we've got Crown Violent Cacophony. Yeah, another is it monstrosity. Uh, not literally, it's a zombie horror, but uh, close enough. So it's uh, four cost, one blue, one red in there, two, three. Legendary Creature Zombie Horror with Flying. And whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a 1-1 counter on Crown and draw a card. Storm Enabling Trash, I hate it. Get, get the Izzet Guild out of here. Next up, Slickshot Lockpicker. It's a 3-cost 2-3 creature human rogue, so counts as a whatever outlaw or whatever. Um, and when it enters battlefield, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost, of course. And then plot three. You may pay three and exile this card from your hand, then cast it as a sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost. So in other words, you activated my trap card. So it's like morph or disguise, except it hides an exile where it's safer, but then you don't get a 2-2. Two -two. Next up, plan the heist. I think you should turn the vault into an elk. And see, that's why I got kicked out of their gang. So it's a four cost double blue sorcery uncommon surveil three. If you have no cards in hand, then draw three cards. And then plot four. So you could just invest in needing it later and you'll get more out of it if you had nothing in your hand. Drawing three for four is already a little overpowered, especially just in the uncommon slot, but it, it's sorcery speed, but it should be. The standard baseline for cards that are just vanilla, blah, whatever, is one and a half mana per card. Generally set by like divination and other cards like that, but uh, there are exceptions. This is no such exception. You could not qualify or use any part of this other than the middle line where it says <laughs> then draw three cards. And you still got it done for four mana. That's a little much. Next up, unfortunate accident, because of course you have to tie somebody up on rope and put them on the train lines, whatever. And now this is, this almost looks like an enchantment frame. What the hell is this? And then it's got one black mana with like a little star in the top right. The hell? Spree, choose one or more additional costs. Oh, the little star is a reminder. And it's not a star, it's probably a plus sign, and this is just really low quality. Thanks, Watsy. So in addition to it doing nothing for one, you can add to it two generic and one black destroyed target creatures, so for four total. And then if you tack on a one generic, create a one one red mercenary creature token, we know what they do. Wait, you guys made multimodal strive and didn't call it mega strive? How dare you? I'm reporting you all to HR. I will stop making that joke when hell freezes over. Shut up, that person was a bitch. 
Anyway, final showdown. Uh, it's one white plus spree cost. Uh, so one generic. All creatures lose all abilities until end of turn. Nice. And then also plus one generic. Uh, choose a creature you control. It gains indestructible till end of turn. And then plus three plus two white. So five. Destroy all creatures. I mean, a six cost basic board white, but still those options, man. Indestructible. So if you got seven. Dang. And then all creatures lose all abilities. Like, for example indestructible well next up gonti's here because of course he is can he echoes what the hell how do you say that acquisitor that's not a word i don't think person who does acquisitions i guess is what they were going for sure whatever uh it's three color five costs i don't know about that uh blue plus green plus black legendary creature aetherborn rogue so he's changed a bit um five five spells you cast but don't own cost one less to cast Oh, that's just pure degeneracy, but this is from OTC, which I believe is the commander deck, so just saying. Uh, whatever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, look at the top card of that player's library, then exile it face down. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. This video is long enough, I kind of zoned out halfway through that, I'm just going to not cover commander yet. So uh, back to uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction, we've got Gisa, the Hellraiser, because of course she's there, why not? If you have a western set, you gotta have zombies, that's just the rules, I don't make them, I just report on them. So it's a 5 cost 4, 4 legendary creature, human warlock, with ward 2, pay 2 life. So 2 mana and pay 2 life, there's a comma there. Skeletons of zombies you control have plus 1 plus 1 menace, which is incredibly annoying, although for 5... And uh, whenever you commit a crime, create two tapped 2-2 two, two blue and black zombie rogue creature tokens. This ability triggers only once each turn. That is pretty powerful, but still costs five. But, you know, still not bad. Uh, next up, Great Train Heist. Also not a story spotlight card. Okay, whatever. Uh, I guess it wasn't that great of a heist. Hail. Um, one red plus spree. So you can pay three, untap all creatures you control if it's your... Oh, God. If it's your combat phase, there's an initial combat phase after this phase. Uh, plus two generic creatures you control get plus one, plus one, gain first strike till end of turn. And plus one red, choose target opponent. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to that player this turn, create a tapped treasure token. Ouch. Just for two with that last mode. That is nuts. You guys know I'm, I'm generally in favor of you have more mana, do more thing with thing without having to have card luck and draw luck get in your way. And I hate it when I draw a power card in my opening hand that costs too much. And I hate it when I draw something that would be perfect for opening turn, you know, on turn 15. So why not have this? Multi-kicker, strive, all that stuff. Overload, even like uh, monstrous. I mean, why not? Do it up. And this is probably the best they've done with it. And when do you get really high mana counts? In limited matches, usually. I think white-red is going to just absolutely wreck people's asses at these events. Well, we're about halfway through, and this video is long as hell, so I'm just going to make this, upload it, and then either late tonight or early tomorrow, you'll be seeing another spoiler video. Oh boy, there's a bunch more to go, and it gets wilder from here, so thanks for watching. Subscribe if you don't want to miss some more, and I'll see you guys next time.